Hello, welcome to this week's episode of the UFO Cast. This is an interview with Alan Perry, recorded earlier this year at ShadowCon 2. I had a brief sit down with him in the green room and I started by asking him how he got involved with Jerry Anderson in the first place. Well, basically speaking, I was working as a clapper boy um, on Robin Hood with Richard Green, going back many, many years. And the production secretary on uh, that was Sylvia Than. Sylvia Than. Um, and... When the series actually finished, she said, would you like to... Um, my boyfriend's just started up a, a programme called Supercar. Would you consider being a clapper boy on it? Would you come across and have an interview? I said, yeah, not a problem. And this was in Slough. Um, and I went across on one Saturday morning, met Jerry, and he said, look, we'd like you to employ you. This is a series of 13, this was Supercar. Um, and we'll offer you X amount of money. So I said, that's fine, that's good, I'll commute. Ashford was about eight miles from Slough, so it wasn't too bad. <coughs> so um, that's basically how I got into the Anderson family, if you want it, for a better word, because Sylvia, Sylvia then matched up with Jerry, got married, and that's when it all started. Supercar in its own right was a, a success, and then we really stretched it a little bit further. We did uh, four, um, Fireball XL5. That was the next one we actually did, uh, which was moving uh, forward again on more special effects. More, We were pioneering. We were trying to find out ways to make things look better. Um, and that series went down um, very, very well. We went on from that to our first colour production, which was Stingray. Our Stingray was... Um, a fan, in my opinion, it was a fantastic show. It was, um, and we learnt a lot. We were shooting through tanks with small fish in foreground. Um, we had roller backings for where vehicles could go. We had cut down sections of cars so we could shoot the puppets actually in the cars themselves. Then cut back to a wide shot, and the car goes through frame. Um, no, we pioneered, and then that's when we really went into in a big way back projection. And that way we sort of got involved with back projection where we went out, shot our plates and then put people, you know, in front of them. After that, we did Thunderbirds, which was really, I think, that was Jerry's heyday. That was the, the programme. And um, we did a lot of Thunderbirds. And when Lou Grade saw it, he said, this is fantastic. He said, look, this, we've, we've got to make a, a feature film out of this. And I was involved on the uh, on the making of the fe feature film. Um, after that, everyone knows Captain Scarlet came along, and we did a lot of series of Scarlet. They redesigned the puppets; the heads were smaller. We used actually false eyes in the puppets, which um, made them look much more realistic. The, the mouth mechanisms and the lip was improved upon, and they brought actually brought in half puppets in, uh, where you could operate from underneath so with no strings that was Jerry's big bane actually that was the, the thing that got to him he hated, he hated strings. the strings yeah. hated them with a vengeance and being on the camera side it was my job to get rid of them so I used to use powder paint to blend them into the backgrounds and we did it that way but then it was really great when we had the remote control or the controls underneath which was great for flying stuff on Captain Scarlet because the you would need to shoot them from the waist up yeah, anyway, yeah. Then, yeah. And when they were in the canopy as well, you could have the full canopy. You didn't no have to strings. have a hole in the top and no strings. It was much more. It was much better for the, the puppeteers. Yeah, they could do a lot more with them. You know, they could lean. They could do. So, yeah. So that all worked very, very nicely. And then after that, we did Joe ninety, um, which I enjoyed. I directed quite a few of the Joe nineties. Then we did Secret Service, which was with Stanley Unwin, who played the. Uh, the, the vicar and a little man who was in a suitcase, he could shrink and take them away. Anyhow, that was the end, really, basically, of the puppet side. And along came UFO. And I was very fortunate to be invited to uh, direct a few of those, which I did, thoroughly enjoyed. And um, I'm here today, basically, because that's what I worked on. And it's... Uh, who would think in all these years we'd uh, be talking about... Indeed, UFO. And you, you, you said at the start that you, you worked as a, a, a clapper 
boy. Pepper Loader. On Supercar. On Supercar. And, uh, yeah, on Supercar. And, and, and by the time you were at UFO, you were directing. What was the progression like in terms of the jobs that you did on those different shows? Within the, within the camera department, because that's one of my hobbies. I love cameras. Um, within the camera department, you start as a, a clapper loader. Then you got move up to a focus puller. That's keeping the puppets. and Which, because they're so small, is quite a, a job. And you go from that up to a camera operator. And that was my main... That's what I'm, I loved, operating the camera yeah. and tracking the camera. And that's where I became quite creative on that side, working alongside the director, saying, look, we can do that to that if you want to get him from there to there. Yeah. We can, I can... And that worked really, really well. And I think that took me in good stead <coughs> when uh, Captain Scarlet came out. So that was your, your first that directing thing, job was, was Captain Was on Scarlet. Captain Scarlet, yeah. And the first one I did was a programme called Manhunt. Did quite a few of those. Then, we, as I say, we did um, Joe 90, which was another pretty good series. And then it was Secret Service with Stanley Unwin and the, the Model T Ford and the other bits. And then, as I say, we moved on to the live action, which was Jerry Anderson. That's what he was dying to do all the way along, wanted to get into a live action series. And, and so you haven't cut your teeth directing puppets and miniatures... How was that when you were suddenly thrown into directing actors? Well, much harder directing puppets to people, believe it or not. But still, it's more frightening for the director. That's when it was sort of, you know, it's, these people can answer back. They couldn't. Um, and it was, really, it was really good to work with people. And the main cast that he'd employed, Jerry and Sylvia were good people, they were professional people and they had ideas alongside you as a director and if you worked with them you ended up with a good product at the end of it and really that's what brought me on that's what I enjoyed doing I've been down and watched Killstraker which was one of mine and it still holds its own now it's, um, yeah let's put it this way it's given me a career for the last 50 odd years which I've thoroughly enjoyed. It's been great. So Killstrike was, was one that you did. What were the others that you, you worked on, if you could Respo- recall? Responsibility, Seat, Survival, Close-Up. One more. Teletech Affair. That's, they were mine. Yeah. And, and, All um, on the moon. They, they must have had an like, idea that I'd be the, the moon, moon guy. Yeah. Um, just if, briefly, if you could share some of your recollections of the, of, of, of the cast. So obviously you, you, would, you would work closely with Ed Bishop and, and George Shaw. George Shaw and, the, and Michael the, Billington. The, yeah. uh, and also the, the guest artists each time. Artists as well, yeah. Were Michael you involved in casting any of those people? Was no, that, the casting was done by a casting director and Sylvia Anderson. Right. As Sylvia actually designed a lot of the costumes as well. That, that was her side. Yeah. The casting and, and that side of it. Um, it just everything just sort of dovetailed in. As I say, we could always get a meeting with Ed if my script was coming up. But don't forget, he was shooting another script with another director, and I've got a new I've got a new script. I'm breaking it down, looking at, thinking the way I'm going to do it, and then sit down with Ed and the lads in the bar one night, looking through. What do you think this? We want. I want to try and get me from there to there. How can we do it where it's going to work? And don't forget, we might be shooting that last and that first. You know? So you've got to get your performances right. You've got to bring it up for, to that level for that sequence and that level to another. So, yeah, working with professional main cast was great. And the people they brought in were, excuse me, exactly the same again. They were, they were, they were professional people. Were you conscious of the amount of money that was being spent on the show and did you feel a, an extra kind of responsibility because of that? Well, yes, it was because that was supposed, or we heard, it was going to be the most expensive TV series made. And I think it was. I don't know whether they've repeated it in this day and age, but whatever. Um, yeah, you felt responsible, but when you walked on the sets and saw the sets and you saw the costumes and you saw... you think It, made, it gave you confidence. Look, they've put it together. This is good. This is going to work. You know, we can make it work. And... Um, yeah, it, as I say, I've had a fantastic career and a lot of it was taught to me by the, the puppets to start with and then the live action. They couldn't answer back the puppets, by the way. And, and so UFO was the, 
The last thing that you did for the Anderson Last thing State? I did, as I said, I got, I got called up north, and, which are where I, I live now, to look, look at a TV commercial. Met somebody who said the uh, Yorkshire Television was now coming on stream and uh, there was a vacancy up there. Things went quiet for me on the other side. So I commuted for a year, moved up, set up the company, and it's still going to this day. So, yeah. But not by me, by my son now. Uh, yeah, and that's the story of my time up to now. Thank you very much, Alan Perry. Thank you. No problem. Thanks once again to the organisers of ShadowCon 2 and to Alan Perry. What a great interview. And Michael and I will see you next time on the UFOcast. <laughs>